what is up guys good morning good afternoon good evening good night i don't know what time you're watching this but uh for me it's morning so if i sound a little bit groggy excuse me for that but uh i had to make this video as soon as possible uh, a couple of really cool tier shifts that happened uh over the last 24 hours uh for the month of august in the smogon tiers of course we know them all so well ou ru uh, i skipped over one ou U, U, ru nu and of course pu so every three months or so they make uh, shifts in the tiers the last time the last time they did this was in may when they uh, dropped selby conkelder and sylveon down to uu uh quagsire and amoongus up to ou and all those great shifts that we had uh it was really cool to see the uu tier change so drastically recently we had Salamence banned from the UU tier as well so uh, a, lo a lot of crazy things happening in 2016 all the bans uh, for shadow tag and um, hoop unbound and it's, uh, it's been a crazy year for Pokemon especially in the uh, in the Smogon scene and the Pokemon showdown scene but um, uh, that heavily influences the way we play Pokemon across uh, uh, across the world uh, is this website right here is Smogon uh, so if you guys don't know, the way it works is, uh, and I just read this myself, I had no idea that this is how they did it, but the cutoff for each tier is at the point at which you're more than 50% likely to encounter a Pokemon at least once in a given day of playing if you have 20 battles a day. So if you play 20 battles in one day and you're more than 50% likely to encounter a certain Pokemon in a tier that it doesn't belong to, if it's in a higher tier than it's supposed to be in, then if that happens over the course of a month or two, they'll bring that Pokemon up to that tier. Such as Quagsire and Amoongus, this is what happened back in May. Stall was so popular on the higher end of, of the ladder that Amoongus and Quagsire saw so much play in the OU tier that they just jumped from where they were being NU and RU uh, respectively. Um, but now uh, we have new tier shifts and you guys will see that uh, sometimes just uh, banning things like Shadow Tag or uh, dropping a Pokemon like Celebi down to the uh, to the RU tier, uh, sorry, to the UU tier can heavily influence the way other Pokemon uh, in their given tiers uh, see usage. So you guys can see right here at the bottom, uh, OU, uh, we have some usage stats. Oh, let's uh, go back down here. Uh, we have... Um, Landorus T at the top with 35% across the entire OU metagame. Uh, that means across the entire ladder, because most most of the time, uh, if you, I, you guys probably can't see this over here, but uh, it says that the baseline is uh, 1695. That's the rating that they base themselves off uh, when they go with usage, uh, usage stats. But this is the combined usage for OU down here, so pretty much across all of the ladder. 35% uh, for Landorus T, which makes sense because it's an extremely popular Pokemon. Heatran sitting at 19, uh, uh, Excadrill and Tyranitar at 8th and 9th. Usually they go hand in hand on teams. And then you move up a little bit over here, you see the UU tier. Um, Sylveon, Crocodile, Hydreigon. Sylveon is the top, top, top in its uh, in its tier in UU. So uh, it's seeing a lot more play. Uh, the reason a Pokemon would move up a tier, as I said before, is if it's seeing play in the tier that it does not belong in so even though lando has a 35 percent usage in ou because it doesn't get used in ubers as much it doesn't move up to ubers so it can't be banned or anything like that uh, also it's not considered broken by the council so uh, then we have ru down here flygon sitting at the top dnc right after blastoise which is one of the best pokemon in the ru tier altogether uh, Mega Glalie, which has seen a lot more play recently. It's super, super good. And then, of course, we have the uh, NU tier down here with Mesprit sitting at the top. Hitmonchan, which is so good. Uh, Garbodor, an amazing uh, defensive and specially defensive wall if uh, invested correctly. But we ha just got our tier shifts, and I'll show you guys right now. You'll see them come up right here. You'll pro you probably got a glance at them a little bit earlier, but I'll zoom in a little bit. So we have Trevenant moving from RU to NU, Rotom Fan moving from NU to PU, Shaman moved from UU to RU, Tornadus moved from BL2 to UU, Mega Heracross move, being moved from BL to OU, Slurpuff moved from UU to RU, Quagsire from OU to UU, Muck from NU to PU, Cacturn from NU to PU, Smeargle as well. Uh, then we have Girder moving from RU down to NU, Pelipper down from NU to PU, and Tangrowth finally moved from RU to OU. So, what does this mean? Well, let's let's go by them one by one. First, we have Trevenant move from RU to NU. 
So, Trevin was not seeing a lot of play in the RU metagame, obviously, because its its typing is, uh, while it may be considered pretty good, uh, seeing as it's a ghost type, it's a good spin blocker for the likes of Blastoise. The thing is, uh, it's very, very frail, um, and pretty much Fletchender sees a lot of play in that tier. Uh, Blastoise gets access to Dark Pulse, which Trevenant doesn't appreciate. Um, if Trevenant got more play, then Jolteon would start running Hidden Power Ice over Hidden Power Grass or the other Hidden Powers that it runs. Hidden Power Water sometimes for, for Mega Camera Up and things like that. So uh, Trevenant has a hard time getting a niche uh, in any, um, or a niche as some people like to say, in any tier that it has ever belonged to. Uh, we've seen it being played in, in UU, it's it's difficult for it to function in UU. Now we moved it down to RU, uh, it was difficult to work there. So now we're trying out Trevenant in NU, and I think NU is where it's going to stay because uh, while Trevenant, as I said, does not have the best stats, it's kind of frail, uh, its ability is kind of like a 50-50 hit or miss with Harvest. Uh, it does get access to the ability Natural Cure, which makes it a great status absorber, and grass types in general tend to find a better place in lower tiers. Uh, because of the fact that uh, you don't have uh, bra big brave birders or big flying type users. Uh, grass, of course, being uh, one of the typings with the most weaknesses, and then you add on another one by giving it a ghost typing. Um, Trevenant is hard to function with so many weaknesses, but the NU tier is so diverse and you can run into so many different teams. Trevenant can actually be a, be a pretty good anti-meta pick. Uh, it fits pretty well on stall because of its leech seeding ability, the, the fact that it, it gets harvest uh, with a, a, a berry like Citrus Berry can make it a uh, very annoying Pokemon to take down, so uh, we might see a lot of Trevenant in the NU tier. Uh, I didn't want to talk about it too much, so I'll just skip on to the next one. Next one we have is Rotom Fan being moved from NU to PU. Um, I don't play a lot of PU, but I think that Rotom Fan is just as good as all the other Rotom forms. Uh, Air Slash is a very, very strong move. If it got Hurricane, it would be a little more broken, obviously, because of rain and, and stuff like that. But um, Rotom Fan is still an excellent mon with the uh, ability to Will-O-Wisp and Pain Split like its counterparts. Uh, it still gets access to Volt Switch, which makes it an amazing Volt Switcher. Uh, great for momentum. I, th I overall always liked Rotom Fan, actually. It's only downside, of course, is that it's weak to rocks. A lot of the Rotom form forms are. Uh, Fan, Frost, and Heat are all weak to rocks. Uh, so that's what hinders it a little bit. But I think Rotom Fan is actually going to thrive in the PU metagame. I have yet to see what it's going to do. Uh, but, I, I mean, personally, I don't play a lot of PU, so I wouldn't know. So I'll kind of just, like, breeze over the ones that move to PU, except for the ones that are really, really important. Uh, next, we have a very, very big one, which is Shaman moving down from UU to RU. Shaman uh, saw a lot less play over the last few months because of Celebi's introduction into the tier. And what hinders Shaman a lot is uh, the fact that its coverage uh, does not really hit a lot of the tier. Uh, being moves like Earth Power. Uh, Seed Flare is a cool move, but it's very situational. Uh, Tentacruel takes it neutrally. Uh, it takes the Earth Power even after a Seed Flare and is able to hit it with a Sludge Wave. There's so many things that just... Uh, there's a lot of Pokemon that hard counter Shaman as well in the... Um, in the UU metagame because of the fact that it's a, it's a single stab. It only gets grass stab. Uh, we have Pokemon like Celebi, like I said before, Mega Sceptile, which is a very good Pokemon in, uh, in UU. So there's a lot of grass types up there that um, get access to better coverage for the tier and also have dual stab, which give them uh, an advantage over Shaman. And I, I really th think that Shaman might move back up because Shaman's not bad at all. But Celebi kind of took over in the past couple of months because a lot of people wanted to use Celebi. So we'll see what Shaman's able to do, but I, I know for I know that it can tear up the RU tier if it stays there too long. Like people are gonna are gonna make very wacky sets with it, and you guys are gonna see how much of a powerhouse this thing is. I wanna play it in RU. I'm gonna do a couple of lives with it. Uh, maybe even one of the other Pokemon that we'll mention in a, in a few seconds. But uh, our next Pokemon here is uh, Tornadus moved from BL2 to UU. Now this doesn't change much because you could always use it in UU, but this just opens people's eyes to how big of a threat um, Tornadus actually is in the UU tier. Uh, a lot of people didn't consider it because, uh, well, it's frail, it's it's single stab, but it's a lot like Tornadus Therian, actually. it's It gets 
pretty much all of the same coverage. It gets Hurricane, it gets Knock Off, it gets uh, Super Power, it gets Grass Knot. Grass Knot is huge because of Swampert. Uh, its speed actually still allows it to outspeed um, base 110s that hit that 350 mark. So that makes it very strong as well. Um, it's just bringing Tornadus uh, into the light a little bit. Um, it's one of the best rain setters in UU uh, because obviously it's extremely fast and it gets access to rain dance. Um, so that's that's Tornadus for you. It's just, again, bringing it into the light a little bit. Mega Heracross move from uh, BL to OU, another one that doesn't matter too much, but it just goes to show how little uh, usage Mega Heracross was getting before, uh, but now because of uh, the new variants of stall, uh, the fact that Mega Heracross can actually break stall pretty easily behind a sub, um, a lot of people are trying it out higher on the ladder. Uh, it's just a very good Pokemon overall. It's great to pair with um, with faster, uh, with uh, with offense. Uh, basically, you pick off the uh, the things uh, that Mega Heracross can't handle with like. Um, faster water types like Keldeo uh, and things like that and then Mega Heracross just comes in and sweeps with uh, with Pin Missile and Close Combat and stuff like that so um, so Mega Heracross is, is uh, a very good Pokemon that not a lot of people were using before uh, mainly because of uh, the different types of stall variants in the tier um, and a couple of other uh, other reasons but uh, now that uh, certain Pokemon are getting more play uh, and uh, the OU tier has slowed down a lot, so that gives Mega Heracross a chance to breathe as well. So a lot more people are using it, that's why you see that shift. Uh, but the next one's a lot more important. A Slurpuff moving down from UU to RU. Now, um, because of Quagsire's uh, inability to exist in the tier, in the UU tier, a lot, a lot of people expected uh, setup sweepers to uh, emerge and uh, thrive in that kind of setting. But Slurpuff was one of them that could not uh, that could not do that because, well, simply the fact that Celebi was around once again. Celebi had a heavy influence on what happened in the, in the last three months. A lot of people wanted to try out different uh, forms of setup sweeping, um, with uh, Celebi, of course, uh, being able to Swords Dance and Nasty Plot uh, boosts and Baton passing them into different Pokemon uh, like Sharpedo and things like that. Uh, so Celebi as a setup sweeper got a lot more play and Slurpuff kind of fell off a little bit uh, I don't think Slurpuff's gonna do too much in the RU tier um, Because there's the existence of a lot of Pokemon like a Scavalier which Slurpuff can't hit too hard I, I mean there is Drain Punch, but that doesn't Oko even at plus six uh, and you're gonna get iron headed and destroyed There's a lot of different Pokemon in that tier that can take on Slurpuff stabs uh, Well, it's stab and it's coverage, so uh, I don't see Slurpuff doing too well in the RU tier, but that is another Pokemon that I want to try out to see how uh, how it's going to work out. Um, Pokemon like Bronzong shut it down so hard too, it's it's pretty bad, but um, I, like just come in Gyro Ball and it's gone. <laughs> Uh, the next, uh, the next shift is Quagsire moving down from OU to UU. This was expected. Uh, when Amoongus and Quagsire moved all the way up to OU from where they were, a lot of people were, were surprised. A lot of people understood as well because, uh, of course, the, uh, the existence of stall in OU and so high on the ladder, uh, made it so that those Pokemon saw a lot more usage than they would otherwise. Uh, Quagsire moving down from OU to UU, what does this mean? Uh, it means that Celebi is no longer going to be baton passing boosts as often. Because if you baton pass into something, I can switch into my Quagsire and just stop your sweep. Immediately. You lose all momentum from that from that boosting. Unless it's to a Pokemon that gets grass coverage, then it's a different story. But Celebi is going to be acting more as the prominent grass type in... Uh, in UU now because of Quagsire's existence, a lot less, a lot fewer people are going to be uh, making a setup sweep attempts with Celebi, uh, with Celebi's baton passing. So uh, we'll see how Quagsire affects the uh, the meta game. I don't like Quagsire in, in in any tier it exists in. I hate it. I it's one of my most hated Pokemon um, because one of uh, the game's greatest assets is being able to set up with a Pokemon once you've weakened things and just sweep up a team. And Quagsire kind of just says no to that, and I really don't like that, but um, you just have to deal with it, I guess. Uh, he wasn't seeing enough play in OU, obviously, uh, without uh, the Goth Cell variant of Stall being around as much, so move down uh, to UU. And a lot of people were getting fed up of using Stall as well, I think, uh, because Stall is a very, very boring 
Um, it's a very boring team to play in general. So I could see a lot of people just like shifting away from it. So that's, uh, that's kind of why Quagsire moved down. I wanted to touch on Amoongus a little bit because it was a Pokemon that moved up at the same time. Amoongus I don't see dropping anytime soon because with uh, Amoongus' introduction into the tier, a lot of people have discovered just how good of a Pokemon it is for checking Pokemon like uh, Mega Deancey, Mega Altaria, uh, if it's not carrying Fire Blast. Uh, that, that typing, that Poison and Grass typing, uh, it was already really good with Mega Venusaur, but the fact that you can have it while not having to invest in a Mega Slot, and the fact that Amoongus gets Regenerator just makes it such a big nuisance to so many teams. Like, Breloom is, is seeing so much less play because you can't spore an Amoongus, you can't hit it hard with your stab, with either one of your stabs, so... Um, Amoongus is really becoming the uh, primary spore user in uh, in OU, and I don't see it moving from there anytime soon. Amoongus is a really, really good Pokemon. So, moving on to the next uh, Pokemon here, we have uh, Muck, Cacturn, and Smeargle all moving down, uh, and Pelipper. We'll put Pelipper in the same category. Uh, Muck, Cacturn, Smeargle, and Pelipper all moving down from NU to PU, um, and this is actually pretty big because... Uh, Muck is a great defensive Pokemon. It can also act as a great curse sweeper. Uh, it's great for um, for stopping fairies. For its its typing is just great. Like Mono Poison is really really strong in those lower tiers. Uh, it just it has a lot of really good coverage as well. Uh, so Muck is is a great Pokemon that I can see thriving in PU. Cacturn. This is kind of crazy. Like I understand that Cacturn has a lot of weaknesses. But it's also extremely strong, and seeing it move down to PU kind of scares me for the PU players. Um, like, I'm, I'm gonna try out to see what the tier looks like with Cacturn around, but this is really scary because if Cacturn gets up one Swords Dance, it can sweep your entire team. Like, especially in PU, like, it's not very fast, but the fact that it gets access to Sucker Punch, uh, and, like, Seed Bomb, and, like, it's actually pretty versatile as a Pokemon too. Uh, like, it gets access to some pretty cool special moves. Cacturn is just a monster, man. And people don't give it enough respect. Not enough people played it in, in, in NU. Uh, again, because of that grass typing. Like, you see how many grass types just moved down recently. Like, uh, Celebi moving down to UU. Caused Shaman moved down to RU. Caused Trevenant to move down to NU. Caused uh, Cacturn to move down to PU. So, it's kind of like this, this domino effect where if one grass type moves down the rest have to move down because they're no longer as good in their respective tier. So, uh, I, I feel like Cacturn is going to be one of those regrets uh, that they're going to have because this thing is going to, like, ravage th through teams. Uh, Smeargle is another one that I kind of disagree with, uh, moving it down from NU to PU. Like, Smeargle just keeps moving down and down and down, and it's because it doesn't really have a role. That's, that's Smeargle's problem is that it doesn't have a role on a team other than, like, setting up hazards. Like, it can't be an offensive threat. It can't be a defensive Pokemon. It has to be a setup lead. That's where you you have to confine Smeargle to. But now that changes a little bit. With the PU tier, of course, being the uh, tier where the, the weakest Pokemon exist, not necessarily the weakest, but the ones that can't thrive in other, uh, other tiers, uh, this also um, results in Smeargle actually having a good speed tiering matchup, because a lot of Pokemon in PU are actually relatively slow. Uh, and you can run, like, special Smeargle with, like, Fire Blast for Avalug and, and stuff like that. Like, Smeargle can literally do anything, and people aren't exploiting that enough. Like, it's, it's literally just Spore or Dark Void, Sticky Webs, Stealth Rocks, and, like, Explosion. I don't know. <coughs> excuse, excuse me. Like I said, it's a little bit early in the morning, guys. But, um, that, like, Smeargle can actually do a lot more than that, and especially in the PU tier. Um, I don't think they're gonna regret it as much as they're gonna see how good Smeargle actually is, and people might start actually using it elsewhere. So, I'm curious to see how that's gonna work out. Uh, Girder moving down from RU to NU. I played a lot of RU uh, recently. Never saw Girder on anybody's team. It's just so hard for it to function because there are so many better Eviolite Pokemon like uh, Togetic uh, in the tier that Girder just like doesn't find a, a place for itself. Uh, it's not a, it's not a super tanky wall like it, it does well at walling and yes with a couple of uh, bulk ups up it can be very very threatening but it's hard to get those bulk ups up initially and those bulk ups don't help its spadef either so things like us uh, uh, powerful psychic types uh, that could hit on the special side could pretty much nerf 
girder instantly. Um, that's uh, that's mainly its big reason is because it, it couldn't act as, as a proficient enough wall in the tier. And I feel that's why it's moving down. You never saw play with it. Uh, and uh, I know what it can do in NU though because it has been in NU before and it can actually be a pretty big threat So curious to see how that's gonna work out now with the new NU metagame uh, Especially with Mesprit running around everywhere. It's uh, you guys will see right here uh, Mesprit is the top used Pokemon. So it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be difficult for it even to see any play there Zatu of course being up at the top as well in sixth place. So we'll see how that works out uh, Pelipper moving down from NU to PU now this one uh, is another one I'm kind of scared of because Pelipper is actually a pretty big wall breaker uh, with access to Hurricane and Skull. Often it'll run Specs um, and it gets access to Roost and I believe it doesn't get Defog. I'm not sure though. I'd have to check that. But uh, it can be a pretty good utility mod. It can be a pretty hard wall breaker even with its base 85 I believe special attack. So Pelipper, uh, another one I'm, I'm curious to see how it's uh, how it's going to do. We'll, we'll cover all this when we actually start playing these tiers with these new Pokemon in them, of course, other than Tornadus and Mega Heracross, because those were already technically there. But uh, then we have, uh, finally, the biggest change I feel uh, is Tangrowth moving from RU to OU. Um, I'm glad they saved the best for last. Tangrowth has proven itself to be... Probably the best defensive grass type, like mono grass type, across the entire game. Um, Tangrowth has phenomenal stat distribution, being able to be run as a physical or a special attacker, as a physical or a special wall through the use of Assault Vest, um, as a utility mon, as an offensive threat, uh, being able to have so many different coverage options like any hidden power that you want to run specifically fire uh, for the threats like Scizor or Ferrothorn. Uh, defensive threats, of course. Uh, you have um, Earthquake, uh, Giga Drain, Knock Off. It's, it's so strong. You think your Latios is a switch into my Tangrowth? Here, eat this 50% and lose your item. Like, it's just... Tangrowth is so, 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 so good. And the fact that it gets access to Regenerator, it couples so well with Pokemon like Tornadus and Slowbro. Like, Tangrowth is so strong, man. It didn't get enough respect before. And I'm so glad it's moving up to OU. Another reason I'm glad it's moving up to OU is because we needed a new resident grass type up there uh, as the top uh, defensive grass type. Now that Mega Venusaur is seeing a little less play, Amoongus is kind of its uh, its replacement in the tier, uh, being grass and poison. But we needed, we needed like a mono grass, just like strong defensive typing and Tangrowth is one of those Pokemon. Talonflame is also seeing a little bit less play. It's fallen to 10th place in the, um, I was about to say power rankings, but in the, uh, in, hold on, the usage stats, here we go. Um, Talonflame, 13% as you can see here. Um, it used to be like up at the top near third or fourth, uh, cause Talonflame is a very strong Pokemon, but it's seeing less play now. Uh, so Tangrowth has a little bit of an easier time, uh, and also Talonflame just has so many checks, like, you run, like, Slowbro, and they can't move anymore. Like, you can run Spadef Talonflame with Will-O-Wisp to wear it down, but that's gonna be a hell of a battle. Uh, then you have Tyranitar, like, Banded T-Tar, like... You want to burn me? Sure, I'm still going to knock you out with Stone Edge. It doesn't matter what you do, you're still getting knocked out. Um, so Tangrowth is uh, is just really, really strong in in conjunction with other Pokemon. Like I said before, Slowbro and Tornadus. And the fact that it will no longer be a thing in the RU and the UU tier also makes that really cool. Because, like I said before, all the grass, type, uh, grass types shifted. Tangrowth is one of those ones that shifted the other way. So it went all the way up to OU, so everything else moved down. Um, and without its existence in RU and UU, there's one less wall, one less regenerator as well to deal with. So I don't think uh, Tangrowth was super good in UU. I think that's probably the tier it saw the least play in. But in RU and OU, it was just so good. So it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be cool to see it out of the uh, the RU and the UU tier, and see what kind of doors that opens for other Pokemon to. Uh, to thrive in uh, and it's these kind of tier, uh, tier shifts that might seem like they don't make a huge impact on the metagame but there it's not remember it's not just these Pokemon that are changing tiers it's that other Pokemon in other tiers are now gonna get a chance to uh, to to get some play in higher tiers like let's say let's take for example I don't know uh, with Shaman out of the tier uh, maybe Seismitoad is going to get more play in UU because there's one less grass type. 
um, with, uh, what else is there? With Slurpuff out of the, uh, no, well, Slurpuff moved down, right? Uh, so, yeah. No, you can still play Shaman in, in the UU tier, even though it dropped to RU, uh, but it's, it's going to see less play, so that's that's what I meant by that. Uh, let's take a Pokemon that moved up, for example, uh, Tangrowth. So, uh, that's... Uh, there, there we go. Uh, Seismitoad can maybe now see more play in, in UU because of that. Tangrowth moved up, Shaman moved down as well, so there's going to be less Shaman uh, in the tier um, as a result. So, maybe Seismitoad is going to see more play as a resident uh, Stealth Rocker in the UU tier. So, that's just one example. I'm sure there are many others that I can't think of right now, but uh, that's pretty much all the tier shifts, guys. That's what I wanted to talk about, just to uh, present the news to you guys. Uh, again, it was kind of early, so I'm sorry if my commentary was a little bit lackluster. If you made it this far, thank you so much. Hit that like button down below if you enjoyed uh, this kind of news. If you want uh, me to continue releasing this kind of news and you want to see it when it comes out, uh, be sure to, uh, to like, to comment, and to subscribe, of course, if you haven't already. And uh, that's it for me today, guys. I'll catch you a little bit later, hopefully with a uh, UU Live, if I get enough time to render it, uh, because I did get to bed very, very early, a lot earlier than I wanted to, because uh, I wanted to put in some work. But uh, hopefully you guys get that later. It's a really cool UU Live. I ran into somebody interesting on the ladder, so be sure to check that out. And uh, that's it, guys. Thanks again for watching. I will catch you guys later. Ciao.